<clears throat> hey, good morning again. It's still morning here in Walla Walla. The sun's out for, well, it's light outside. It's kind of raining and uh, that kind of a day here. Well, in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, the tool post grinder I built. Uh, that's a, it's a very important tool. Uh, to me, uh, same as my surface grinder. I have a Herrick 6x12 surface grinder and this uh, Cincinnati number no. two uh, uh, tool and cutter grinder. And uh, you can attach a tool post grinder to a, uh, an old cutter grinder like this and uh, do internal grinding and then plus kind of uh, have the advantage of a tilt head. So uh, I'll get with showing you how I built this thing, okay? Here we go. I get this out. I'm gonna slide right out, and here it is. Now, what I've got is um, I got a half horse uh, high speed motor here. It's um, a ball door, and uh, I got it running one direction. I ha I have another motor that's three phase, and I have a um, a reversing switch. And I think these are 3450 RPM. Now, what I did with this motor, and I also want to point out that this is not a, a, a TEFC motor. It's not totally enclosed. And, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. But the one reason uh, I'm using this motor is it's an exceptionally smooth running single phase half horse motor. Um, that a distributor picked out for me for this grinder. Now I have a three-phase motor and um, that's more ideal because you know three-phase motors do run uh, smoother than single phase. Now to make this work as good as it does, and it works very good, I ended up leaving the end bell on this motor and pulled it out with the rotor and held the end bell in a steady rest in a lathe. And uh, I believe the lathe was a Lodge and Shipley power turn. It was a geared head lathe similar to the Axelson I have now. So I grabbed the end bell and then I machined this shaft. Uh, I believe it's a 5 8 shaft. Um, which is, you know, the large shaft for this size. I machined and threaded it for that nut, okay? And then I machined the shaft, uh, um, I believe, but I, I can't remember for sure, maybe to uh, half inch. While it's rotating on the lathe, supported by the bearing, see? Then I put this pulley on, and then I machined the the pulley the same way on the lathe. So this pulley runs absolutely true. It just does. It, it can't do anything else. Okay, now this is a flat belt. Okay, now I make my own flat belts. I'm here in Walla Walla. You can't buy anything. <laughs> We had a Navy machinist at the community college here, and I'm not kidding you, on the projects uh, he had uh, for you to do, uh, you made the screws and nuts and bolts, because out at sea, you might not have that, so you make everything. <laughs> so what this is, uh, these are um, micro groove belts, and you can see there's still some, some of the grooves left here. And I, to do these, um, I use uh, another motor mounted on the base here, mounted to my bench over there that's always covered with crap. It's got a 5 8 thick uh, steel plate on the top with uh, tapped holes, half inch tapped holes. And I can mount this tool post grinder um, to that bench and test drive pumps and all kinds of things. So this thing will do uh, more than just uh, be a tool post grinder. So I got a couple of belts here. This one here, I don't know if you can see, I just about uh, 
uh, got the grooves out. But what I do is I turn the belts around inside out and run them at a slow enough speed, you see, and then I sand the rubber down, those micro grooves down and make them thin like that. And then they run um, exceptionally smooth and they're exceptionally inexpensive and exceptionally available to me here in Walla Walla. You know, you can order stuff like that, but you're going to pay 30 bucks, you know, you buy the cheapest belt. I've even picked some of these up at the scrapyard. So, um, and, and, and modify them as long as the rubber's still good. So, <laughs> now everything in this grinder is uh, recycled metal. It, it, I found out at the junkyard I took you to. Um, at times there's more stuff there. So here's how it, here's how this thing mounts. I, I got this plate with these two slots here, right? Okay, that's the plate that uh, adjustable. Then I mount motors just to a half inch plate here, right? Just a half inch plate that bolts to this plate. That plate slides um, into um, these. Okay, I'll bring this around. And so once these, see, slip in and grab and grab that, right? Just like that, like a, like a claw on each side. Yeah, see? And then when you tighten these bolts, they grab. Let me flip that so you can see it for sure. Ah, there we go. You see that? That fits under that. Now, I was going to do a fancy adjuster, but found they didn't need to. Once I got that mounted in there, let's see, this is all two-inch thick plate that I made that out. Something like that. I should have that other screw, but see how that goes? Okay, once that's down in there, I can adjust it with a screwdriver, okay? And I put the belts on run the thing, adjust it with the screwdriver to get it to, to run in the smoothest, and then just clamp these side bolts. Okay, now let's uh, check this out. Now, here are the spindles right here. Now, this is uh, an external spindle I built. And uh, it's got... Uh, let me get that belt out of this pinch on the motor. I'll point it that way, it's really stuck. Okay, I can flip the motor around and drive it from this side or, or flip the spindle and the motor around and drive it from this side. And it changes whether you're going to use it in the lathe or the tool cutter grinder, okay? So this spindle here, I fabricated all these parts on the fabulous Monarch 10 E here. All of this is custom built for, for the purpose that I need. Now in, in here is a pair of Barden, um, uh, I think they're ZZB with a seal bearings. And I got these at a Hanford auction and these bearings are ridiculously expensive. But you can find a, a pair of angular contact bearings. And what I did was, see, I built the spindle around that. I had to make it larger here to take those bearings. Okay, so I used a pair there. On inside, there's a nut that holds those together to keep the preload. Then at this end, there's a spherical bearing that floats. So nothing gets bound up, you know, as it heats up but it actually runs real cool. Now, this is a grease seal bit, uh, spindle here, okay? Now, the high-speed spindle here I use for internal grinding is the same thing. I've got a pair of um, angler contact Barden bearings with a seal, but I, they they don't have the little balls in them, so they're, I don't know, but they're still extremely expensive. So if I was going to build one now, I would just uh, install a seal, okay? That's all you need to do. Now, this one, um, um, 
is uh, oil lubricated. And I'm glad I did that. I think I would have cooked it already if uh, if I used grease because uh, I use it. Uh, uh, let's see how far. I think with the three phase motor, I can spin this up to 20,000. And uh, with the pulley I have on the single phase motor here, uh, it's about 16,000. Okay, now I can drive it, I can drive this spindle here. Let me see if I can free that belt out of there. Now I can drive this spindle here at the front. Now, I've uh, been criticized before about that, but I want to tell you, um, an old time, um, um, internal grinding attachment for um, uh, cylindrical grinders uh, drove right up the nose like that. Then I can drive it from this end too, okay? Now, um, I uh, can also <laughs> uh, use larger grinding wheels in it like this by removing this point, okay? So um, I will... Uh, show more applications of this. But I wanted to give an overview of how I built it. And here's the heavy bracket I used to um, attach to um, the cutter grinder up at the top. So this thing's built real simple. It's got these uh, uh, spindles here and just a cap arrangement to hold them in, and that simple arrangement for adjustment. Now I'm gonna build a 